Jaden is special. He can move. He can throw. He has good accuracy. He does good with throwing the long ball. But I think a characteristic that he has that a lot of kids across the country doesn't have is his determination and work ethic. Go, fast, go. Come on, come on. He works hard. He's a focused kid in the weight room doing boxing with Coach JB, trying to better himself for his future. Finish, finish, finish. Time. Too easy. My name is Jaden Wade. I'm 13 years old, and I play football. My first time training with Mike, it was a rough day. It was my first time. I didn't think nothing of it. I didn't think it was going to be hard like how it was. And then when I walked upstairs, it was people grinding, crying, and all that. Come on, Wade. Come on, Wade. Come on, Wade. Let's go. Two, three, four, five, eight, five. My name is Mike Evans. I'm the CEO and founder of Lace Facts Academy, a school in Carson, California. In Jaden's life, I'm basically a mentor, a trainer, a coach, uh, somebody that's helping him get to his dreams. I was a football player at the University of Louisville. I also played at University of Nevada. I had a chance to play with Colin Kaepernick, a lot of other NFL players. I think the moment that I saw Wade, uh, we call him Wade, Jaden um, being special is when he was eight years old. You know, you talk about success, you think about winning and you think about overcoming something. He actually failed, he lost the Super Bowl game. He came and started working out. He said, okay, I wanna be better, I wanna win the Super Bowl, I wanna do better than I did last year. And seeing that come from a kid that's eight years old, that's a big shot. Cause you rarely see kids, you know, after they lose, want to get better or want to put the work in so they could, you know, overcome. He pushes himself. Other kids, they might quit. Okay. They don't want you to yell at them. They don't want you to push them. Wade is definitely a kid that wants to be the best. Sometimes, like, if I'm doing bad, they'll tell me that I'm doing bad. But I gotta take it in, because it, it'll get me better. In 10 years, I want to be described as the greatest QB, a legend. Every time I work out, just keep saying, I'm, I'm great, I'm great. Just keep putting that in your head, then you just be a mental rep. The confidence is just, you just got to have it. It's got to be stored into you. You just got to have that. All right, 10 years from now, how do you want to be described? In 10 years, I want to be described as the greatest QB, a legend. How would you describe yourself today? I would describe myself today as still, still the greatest. Well, I could throw 55 yards. When I looked at Malik Willis, I seen him on YouTube, and I, I called Mike and I said, can I try it out? And then we went to Sarah High School. And then that's when we tried it. I did it like three or four times. And then first time it wasn't 55 yards, but like the, three, the third time, that's when I did it. That's when I got my confidence. Like when I do stuff like that, that's when I get my confidence. If you on another team, it's almost impossible for you to stop me. So, we're gonna start off with this story about the lights out. I gotta hear about it. I heard it from your coach. I gotta hear it from you. We played against the Cali Bears, so they, that was a big team. We was we was even that good against them. They was up 7-0. I scored like a, I scored a lot. I scored like five touchdowns. Then the last last touchdown, caught a pick, scored, lights shut out. The crowd went wild. I was like. So I really made the lights shut out. Like I, I'm, I really did that. And then my coach was like, "Lights out, way." I was like, "Lights out, way." And then everybody started calling me "Lights out, way," and that's how I got the name. Go, go. Ah. There you go. Nice, way, nice, nice, nice. Ah. The reason why I do box because it works on my shoulders, works me throw the ball better, accuracy, keep my shoulders strong. Boxing plays a big part for a quarterback because it allows you to react. You know, uh, hand placement, being able to see things before it happens, uh, feet work, and also being like super disciplined. You know, when you're a quarterback, you're, the ball has to stay up. When you're in boxing, you got to keep your hands up. Come on, come on, come on, let's go. Come on.
I've dealt with Wade since he was eight, you know? I've seen so many kids with all the ability not make it, you know? Because it's always something else that keeps you, you know? It's the work ethic, being on time to practice, being a good person. You know, it's not just always the God-given ability that God gives you. I also think a big part comes in is his circumstances. You know, where he comes from, uh, his environment, and him wanting to get out, you know, for his mom and for himself. What motivates me to come to school and work is my mom. Think of her and think this, think the struggle that she's in, think of the goals I'm trying to go through, thinking of the environment that I'm in, trying to get, make it out, trying to make it to the NFL, all that. That's what makes me push more. When I'm on my way back home, I'll see like people on the streets, gang violence and all that. I'll see broken, broken windows trash on the floor everywhere. A lot of things going through my mind. It could be people right next to my house, they ain't probably going for them. It can be a bullet coming. It's a whole lot of things that's, that could happen that's going through my mind. Wade comes from uh, Watts, California. I grew up in South Central, about four or five minutes from there. Uh, so a lot of the circumstances that he dealt with is what I dealt with. And being on the football field training, putting the extra work in in the classroom, it will save my life, and I think it'll be the same thing for Wade. I think that him being able to be around good people like myself, you know, I went to the University of Louisville, uh, Coach JB uh, that works with him in boxing, went to UTEP, Trav, played in the NFL. If they feel like, oh, I can't do it, like, we're able to tell you, no, yes, you can. We did it. You know, the fact that we did it, that means you can. That's a difference, you know? We didn't have us. He has us. now. Is this going to escape, you know, the gang violence around? No, you can't escape that. The only thing we can do is be inspired by it and push to be more successful. My coaches are good role models to me because my dad is not in my life, so they're good role models to me that make sure my head is straight, make sure I won't be in the wrong situations, make sure I'm training, make sure I, like, say if I'm chilling at the house, they'll call me and say, I'm trying to go work out or something like that. Go. There we go, there we go, there we go. Get out of there. The thing that makes me most proud of Wade is definitely his growth as a person. I think the big thing that he's shown me is that he really wants to give back. I don't know a kid that when I talk to, they'd be like, oh, I want to, you know, clean the streets. I want to make sure my neighborhood looks clean. You know, like he's only in sixth grade. Him as a sixth grader talking like that lets me know that it's clicking and our message is getting through and it's definitely making me proud. What would it take for you to be satisfied enough to stop working? Uh, nothing really, I can't stop, I can't think like that. And that's not a great mentality. You can't be thinking like that if you want to be great. One of my D1s offers San Jose. Just because you get an offer don't mean you can stop grinding. You guys keep pushing, keep pushing. No days off means no taking days off, no just chilling at the house without even doing push-ups or something at the house, you can still keep working, just keep grinding. Good, turn, throw. This might be the first ever ambidextrous quarterback. He started on varsity as a 14-year-old freshman. Hashtag one overall pick flame emojis. I got the tweet from Lamar Jackson. My blood was just like rushing through my body. My adrenaline was so high. It was just surreal that a player of that caliber of talent was like responding to me and looking at my stuff. He's already got Notre Dame, Michigan, Oklahoma State, and Nebraska looking at him. My name is Mikey Gow. I'm 15 years old and I play football. No days off means to me, you're always putting your work in and you're really just focused on what you have to do to make it to the next level. We spend most of our time on mechanics. Arm mechanics, a sequencing of upper torso and lower torso, and the footwork that goes with making the most powerful and accurate throws. That's it. He's got a unique skill. This is easy for him. I always thought baseball was going to be my thing. I was a great pitcher. We had a state playoff game, and I threw 70 to 80 pitches as an eight-year-old. Once I started to cool down, I was like, dang, Dad, my arm really hurts. My right arm growth plate was split, and it was like a huge gap, and I couldn't throw a baseball for a whole year. I became ambidextrous. My mom actually brought it up. She said, why don't you just throw with your left arm and just really trick your brain to think that you're a left-hander. 
I brought it over to football, and my goal is to revolutionize the game with it. You change hands when you do that, it's good. <laughs> You're fortunate you can do that. Wall walks, what I'm looking for here, is looking at shoulder strength and stability, as well as core strength. So keep your stomach nice and tight on these. Don't worry about getting too close to the wall, Mikey, all right? Just get as far as you can. This is to help build a lot of strength and stability in those shoulders in overhead position. Since he is an overhead athlete, I need those shoulders strong. My top five quarterbacks of all time are Tom Brady, number one, Joe Montana, number two, Peyton Manning, number three, Aaron Rodgers, number four, and then Brett Favre, number five. When the Ambidextrous, first ever Ambidextrous quarterback video came out, they put it on ESPN and Sports Center. I stared at the comments like all night. I didn't go to school for the next two days because I was just like looking at my follower count. It was just so crazy. The comments and stuff. That got me like really emotional. Not only just like the hate, but like all the positive comments. And I couldn't take it anymore. So I literally got off my phone for like two days. Sometimes hate can shut you down, but if you don't let it, then there's no way that it can. So me and my dad, whenever we see a hate comment, we just block them, we mute them. I've just realized that I need to shut down the hate instead of trying to go after it because that does you no good. I feel like I was raised very well. I've gotten surrounded with great people that helped me be successful, great coaches, great teammates. I really think that's what helped me be more mature in who I am. We have a great first year head coach. He's really taught us how to stay positive through tough moments like adversity. My first freshman varsity game was definitely very nerve wracking for me. I felt like my team was counting on me. I felt like the whole school was counting on me and everyone just wanted to really see what I could do. And then once I didn't really prove it, I felt like the whole world was gonna be against me. And that was a big learning moment for me. You don't back down from adversity. You strike it right back and you never shut down. Recently, we were down 21 to six late in the third quarter and we really just stuck together and we battled back to win 31-21. The NFL team I'd like to play for is Minnesota. My dad grew up there. He's a diehard fan. He actually made me become a diehard fan too. That'd be the dream team. My favorite quarterback of all time is Peyton Manning. That's why I wear 18. Yeah, right here, 18. I went down to Manning Passing Academy in Louisiana. I met Peyton Manning, Bryce Young, and a couple other great college quarterbacks. That was very cool for me, but I'd say who I model my game after is like different playmakers who like to change the game, like Lamar, Michael Vick, Patrick Mahomes, all these guys that totally take the game and put it in a different direction, because that's obviously what I want to do with the ambidextrous things. I want to try to change the game forever. What I'm looking to do is get him quickly under the bar because we're building explosive movements. And he's driven. If you really want to excel in anything, you've got to have an internal drive. As a team goal, I want to take us to the playoffs and then maybe even make it further. But as a self goal, I'd love to get some offers this season. You know, I'd love to build connections with coaches more and more and just keep my stats well. I've proven to myself that I can be great and earn it. Mikey's potential is unlimited. As he gets older, his physical skills have gotten him to where he is now, but his cognitive skills are going to elevate him to another level. I think being humble, that'll only get people to respect you more, and I feel like it makes you feel better as a person, and for me, it'll help me grow up to be a better man when I'm older. I'll take a handshake for me. Handshake. <laughs> after high school. I definitely want to go to college. I'm thinking of going into sports management or communications. A lot of people preach that can't just rely on football because what if you get an injury? What if you end your career? I want to keep well in school. I have a 3.9 GPA right now. I want to keep my grades up and go into college with that mentality. But if I do make it to the NFL, I want to be successful and be up there with the big dogs. What I love most about playing quarterback is definitely being able to take control and it's not so mechanical and being able to keep the guys together and I, I love being able to just go out there and be an athlete. His natural ability, his physical ability is incredible. I think what makes him stand out is how he has handled himself. His maturity shows at such a young age, which you don't find much in young kids. I'm Carter Smith, I'm 16 years old and I play football. I fell in love playing football when I was younger. I, I was playing flag football. One of my buddies now, his dad was one of the other coaches. He brought me over to playing tackle football. When he was about five years old, we got out and started with flag football, and he, he just had this different competitiveness than all the other kids, and, and that's kind of when I knew that he was, he was gonna be something on the uh, sports field.
What's going on, buddy? Good, buddy. Good, All right, man, come on, let's get to work. Ready? Go. Stop. Short, quick steps back up. Reset. Right back into it. Here we go. Let's go. Good. Short, quick steps back up. Reset. I met Carter when he was in the eighth grade. He came in here to do some uh, strength and conditioning. When he got to Vero, I got to coach him, you know, as a freshman, as a quarterback coach and as offensive coordinator. Go. Good. Nice and quick below. My quarterback coach, Josh Bobach, he's probably helped me the most in my quarterback journey. He's played college football, so I mean, he's been around and he knows what he's doing. And he's always there for me when I have questions and helps me with all my stuff. Let's go. Good. Eyes up. Fantastic. His natural ability, just you can see it right away. And we just had to kind of refine him and turn him into a quarterback. At first, I truly believe he was a thrower and an athlete. And now watching him take Fantastic. the strides that he has over the past year, and he's truly becoming Good. a complete quarterback. All right, bud, grab that ball, start on your right hip. Up and over, big slam. Good. When Coach Vogelbach and I start to work out, we work on our, our drops, quickness and speed trying to get faster. I'd say we pay attention to footwork the most. That's probably my biggest problem as a quarterback. Short and quick up, reset. A lot of things we do are very sports specific. So as far as the ball slams, that works on his rotational core for his throwing power. Jumping on the Vertimax, his explosion. Footwork on the Vertimax for his drops against resistance and helping him push up in the pocket. And then just natural strength. And in every strength exercise we do with Carter, we add some sort of core component to it, which is why we put him on the ball when we do that. It engages his core. Playing quarterback, your core is such a big, big part of it. So with Carter, we just always want to make sure that we're involving that. Carter's a leader on the field. You see that from a mile away. You know, his teammates gravitate towards him, and he's an all-around leader on the field. This year, he just broke the Lee County single season passing record, the single season total yardage record, and the single season total touchdown record for Lee County, Southwest Florida, which is, I mean, incredible. The team, which is, the, in my opinion, is the most important thing, is, is going to Tallahassee to play in the state semifinal. It's incredible what he's doing, you know, as a sophomore. But I think what makes him so special, and this goes back to what I said before, Carter, all he wants to do is win on Friday night. He could throw for eight touchdowns or he could throw for none. But if we win, that's what matters to him. And that's, you know, that's special. The ways that I'm able to balance school and football, we have certain times during school where we can get homework done. And I try to be very disciplined in class and get my classwork done so I can work on other classwork. Being close with some of the teachers at school, being able to talk to them and communicate with them definitely helps out a lot. When things get tough, I like to talk to my parents. I think communication is very important and being able to handle adversity. My biggest thing for him was to become a, a, a good man, good human being. You know, be respectful and, and really handle all your responsibilities outside of sports. And then sports, you can take care of that stuff as, as you go. I think with no days off, there has to be a purpose behind it. You know, you can go out and work every day, but if there's no purpose, if there's no goal, it's kind of all for naught. So with Carter, like, we just want to make sure that, you know, all this no days off, we're doing stuff with a purpose. We're doing stuff for a reason and for something greater. A lot of power, let's go. Some of my short term right. goals are winning a state title, maintaining good grades, and just being a good overall person. Long term goals are definitely going to play high level college football, getting a nice education, and hopefully getting drafted. Card, step up quick. Here we go. Ready, go. Push. Good. Short and quick. He's turned into such a, a wonderful young man. Regardless of sports and accolades, he, he truly is a good kid. On and off the field, all around. Like what Dan said, he's just got a big heart. I think that's really the special part.